William Eggleston is one of the most influential and original photographers alive today. You've been behaving yourself. He's an unlikely hero of the contemporary art world, a non-conformist southern aristocrat who is also a true American pioneer. Forty years ago, he dragged colour, kicking and screaming, into the world of art photography. Seventy years old and still as rebellious as ever, Eggleston's unique vision shows no sign of letting up. I know quite a few people are quite afraid of him. If he doesn't like you, he can, he can just kill you off in a minute. Right, that that's one of the stupidest questions I've ever been asked. Now, with a stunning retrospective touring the globe, and a generation of young photographers clambering over each other to claim him as an influence, Eggleston is at last ready to talk about his work. For many years, he was frustratingly elusive. But just over a year ago, Eggleston allowed director Rainer Holzheimer to come and observe him at work in Memphis, actually taking photographs on the road. That footage forms the backbone to tonight's Imagine and gets us closer to this remarkable figure than ever before. William Eggleston was born in Memphis, Tennessee in 1939 and still lives and works there today. He's on a photographic excursion with his son, Winston. In a career spanning almost 50 years, Eggleston has shot thousands of photographs here, in and around his hometown. His subject matter is the banal and everyday. Pieces yet. Often people ask what I'm photographing. It's a hard question to answer. And the best I've come up with is I just say, life today. I don't know whether they believe me or not. Well, what that means. I don't know what to say about that, but it's 
today. <laughs> Eggleston hardly ever gives titles to his photographs. I don't particularly even like to identify where or the date. I don't. That's just not about photography. I do have a personal discipline. I've only taken one picture of one thing, not two. I would take more than one, I'd get so confused later. I was trying to figure out which was the best frame. I said, this is ridiculous. I'm just going to take one. That's going to be. Eggleston got his first camera at the age of 18. He started off in black and white, printing the pictures himself. I didn't know anything about photography. Um, relied on reading things like literature from Kodak, or some company like that. Not, they weren't. There wasn't much of that around either. <clears throat> I had to sort of teach myself. Even in the early black and white photos, he chose subjects similar to those he would later shoot in colour. They're everyday, unspectacular moments, shot without any photojournalistic ambitions. My friend, who also was interested in photographing, at one time he bought many books containing photojournalism pictures. To me, they were not interesting. But then I found this one. I said, my God, this is, this is not just photojournalism. This is great art, <laughs> compositions, obvious knowledge of painting. A lot of Degas in here, the great painters, and the way of composing. And they're still great. The great influence was Cartier Bresson. There's such extraordinary structure. And what seems so fleeting, this famous decisive moment, but when you break down the frame, the frame has its, its inherent geometry. And it's fluid. And I think that's what Eggleston aspired to. I love Eggleston's black and white photographs. The composition appears so intuitive, so natural. You know, it's not forced upon us at all. It, it appears the simplest thing. But of course, when you analyze it, it becomes actually quite sophisticated and uh, and the messages that these pictures uh, you know, can release to us are quite complex and fascinating. And that, of course, is the hallmark of a very good Eggleston. One thing that I will never forget that really stuck in my mind that Bill did say to me 